Magandang araw mga kasipnayan! Welcome to Sir Ocknick's YouTube channel. In this video, we will recall factor theorem and we will identify zeros or roots of a polynomial. According to the factor theorem, if p of x is a polynomial function and x minus c is a factor of p of x, then p of c is equal to zero. Is x minus 2 a factor of p of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 16? Since our divisor is x minus 2, equated in terms of 0, and then the value of x will be equal to 2. 2 will now be the value of x of every variable in the given polynomial. That will be p of 2 equals 2 squared plus 6 times 2 minus 16, which is equal to p of 2 equals 4 plus 6 times 2 minus 16 or 4 plus 12 minus 10 or simply 16 minus 16 equals 0. Since p of 2 is equal to 0, we therefore conclude that x minus 2 is a factor of x squared plus 6x minus 16. According also to the converse factor theorem, if p of c is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. If x minus 2 is a factor of p of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 16, what is the value of p of 2? The value of p of 2 is equal to 0. Why? Since x minus 2 is a factor of p of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 16, then P of 2 is equal to 0. Let us now discuss on roots or zeros of a polynomial equation. The roots, sometimes called zeros or solutions of a polynomial P of x, are the values of x for which P of x is equal to 0. Based on the zeros of a polynomial function, if x minus c is a factor of p of x, then c is a zero of p of x. Since x minus 2 is a factor of x squared plus 6x minus 16, then 2 is a zero or root of x squared plus 6x minus 16. Here are the steps in finding the roots of a polynomial equation. Number 1. Write the equation in general form or standard form. Determine the degree of the polynomial, which tells us the maximum number of roots it can have. List down all possible rational roots using the rational roots theorem. Number four, use synthetic revision, long division, or factor theorem to determine the roots of a polynomial equation. Five, if the polynomial is in factored form, use the zero product rule. If a is to b are non-zero factors, then a times b equals zero, which implies a equals zero or b is equal to zero, or both a equals b equals zero. Let's have our first example. Find the zeros of x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. Check whether the given polynomial is arranged in standard form. The degree of the polynomial is at third degree. Therefore, we have three maximum zeros. Identify the possible factors of negative 6, which are positive and negative 1, positive and negative 2, positive and negative 3, and positive negative 6. Let us use synthetic division. The numerical coefficients of the polynomial are 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6. Let us try 1. Bring down 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 times 1 is 3, plus, neg plus negative 5 equals negative 2, negative 2 times 1 
that's negative 2, negative 2 plus negative 6 is not equal to 0. Since the remainder is not equal to 0, therefore, 1 is not a possible 0 or possible root. Let's try another one. Let's try negative 1. Bring down the first numerical coefficient, which is 1. 1 times negative 1, that is negative 1, plus 2, that is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 5 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. And 6 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. Therefore, negative 1 is a 0 of the given polynomial. Then using by factoring, the numerical coefficients corresponds to x squared plus x minus 6. Since this is now a trinomial, we may factor out negative 6. Identify factors of negative 6 whose sum is positive 1. The factors are x minus 2 times x plus 3. Equate both factors in terms of 0, that is x minus 2 equals 0, which is equal to 2, and x plus 3 equals 0, which is equal to negative 3. Therefore, the roots are negative 1, 2, and negative 3. Find the zeros of x minus 1 times x plus 1 squared times x minus 2 cubed equals 0. In this case, the given are factors. Since the given is in factor form, we will now proceed to step 5. That's x minus 1 equals 0 x is equal to 1, x plus 1 equals 0, x is equal to negative 1, and x minus 2 equals 0, x is equal to 2. There will be 2, negative 1 because of the exponent 2, while there will be 3, 2's because of the exponent 3. Therefore, the zeros are negative 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 2, and 2. Or, negative 1 multiplicity 2, 2 multiplicity of 3, and 1. The multiplicity of 0 is the number of occurrence of repeated zeros in a polynomial function. Find the zeros of x plus 1 times x plus 2 squared times x minus 4 raised to 3 equals 0. Since the given now is in factored form, we will proceed to step number 5. That will be x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals negative 1, x plus 2 equals 0, or x equals negative 2, x minus 4 equals 0, or x is equal to 4. Take note that there will be 2, negative 2 because of the exponent 2 and there will be 3, 4's because of exponent 3. The zeros are negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, 4, 4, 4. Or simply, negative 2 multiplicity of 2, 4 multiplicity of 3, and negative 1. Find the zeros of x to the 4th plus 2x cubed minus 8x minus 7x squared equals negative 12. Rewriting the polynomial in standard form, that is x to the 4th plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. 
The degree of the polynomial is 4. Therefore, we have 4 maximum zeros. The possible rational roots are positive negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Using synthetic division, the numerical coefficients of the polynomial are 1, 2, negative 7, negative 8, and 12. Let us try first 2. That's bring down 1 times 2 is 2 plus 2. 4 times 2, 8, plus negative 7, 1, times 2, 2, plus negative 8, that's negative 6, times 2, that's negative 12, which is equal to 0. That means 2 is a 0 of the given polynomial. Let's try negative 2. Bring down 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 4, that's 2, times negative 2, negative 4, plus 1, negative 3, times negative 2, 6, plus negative 6, 0. Since we now have 3 numerical coefficients, we may rewrite this in the form of x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Then by factoring, we will have x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 3 equals 0. Using the zero root property, we will have x minus 1 equals 0, which is equal to x equals 1, and x plus 3 equals 0, which is equal to negative 3. Therefore, the zeros are negative 3, negative 2, 1, and 2. Find the zeros of x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. The degree of our given polynomial is 3. Therefore, we have 3 maximum zeros. The possible zeros, which are factors of negative 4, are positive negative 1, 2, and 4. Using the synthetic division, the numerical coefficients of our polynomial is 1, 1, negative 4, and negative 4. Let us first try negative 1. Bring down 1 times negative 1. That's negative 1 plus 1, that's 0, times negative 1 is 0, plus negative 4 is negative 4, times negative 1 is positive 4, plus negative 4 is equal to 0. Since the remainder is equal to 0, therefore negative 1 is a 0 of the polynomial. The numerical coefficients 1, 0, and negative 4 can be written as x squared minus 4 equals 0. Using an assumption difference of 2 squares, the factors of x squared minus 4 is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 2, which is equal to x equals 2 and x is equal to negative 2 under the zero root theorem. Therefore, the roots are negative 1, 2, and negative 2. Let us now summarize what we have discussed in this video. The steps in finding the roots of a polynomial equation are Number 1. Write the equation in general form or in standard form. Second, Determine the degree of the polynomial, which tells us the maximum number of roots it can have. Third, List down all possible rational roots using the rational roots theorem. Fourth, Using synthetic division, long division or factor theorem, Determine the roots of, of the given polynomial equation. Fifth, if the polynomial is in factored form, use the zero root zero product rule, which states that if a and b are non-zero factors, then a times b is equal to zero, which implies that a equals zero or b equals zero or both a equals b equals zero. Let us now check your knowledge. Find the roots of the given polynomials. Do not forget to pause the video while you are answering the activity. Let us try to solve what is in our activity. Find the zeros of x times x minus 4 times x minus 5 squared. Since the given now is in factored form, we will proceed to step 5. That is, 
x times x minus 4 times x minus 5 squared equals 0. Equate each factor in terms of 0, that is x equals 0, x minus 4 is equal to 0, or x equals 4, and x minus 5 equals 0, or x is equal to 5. Take note that there will be two 5s because of the exponent 2. The zeros are 0, 4, 5, and 5, or 5 multiplicity of 2, 0, and 4. Find the zeros of x to the fourth minus 9x squared plus 4x equals negative 12. Rewriting the given polynomial in standard form, we will then have x to the fourth plus 0x cubed minus 9x squared plus 4x plus 12 equals 0. Since the degree is at fourth degree, therefore we have four maximum zeros. The possible factors or zeros and factors of 12 are positive negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Using synthetic division, the, the numerical coefficients of our polynomial are 1, 0, negative 9, 4, and 12. Let us try negative 1. Bring down 1 times negative 1, that's negative 1 plus 0, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus negative 9 is negative 8 times negative 1, that is 8, time plus 4, that is 12, times negative 1, which is equal to negative 12, plus 12 equals 0. Since the remainder is equal to 0, then negative 1 is a 0 of the given polynomial. Let us try positive 2. We have 1 times 2 equals 2, plus negative 1 is 1, times 2 equals 2 plus negative 8 is negative 6 times 2 equals negative 12 plus 12 is equal to 0. Therefore, 2 is a possible is a 0 of the given polynomial. Since we now have 3 numbers left, we may rewrite this one in terms of x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Factoring the given quadratic equation, we will have x minus 2 times the quantity x plus 3. Equating both factors in terms of 0, that will be x minus 2 equals 0, which is equal to x equals 2, and x plus 3 is equal to 0, which is equal to x equals negative 3. We therefore conclude that the zeros are negative 1, 2, 2, and negative 3, or simply negative 1, negative 3, and 2 multiplicity of 2. Thank you for watching Sir Ocnick's YouTube channel. If you think that this video is a big help, hit like, feel free to share, and do not forget to subscribe. Always have fun in learning math. Enjoy learning! Thank you and God bless!